Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful, a little bit windy, hope this isn't too much on the, uh, I wonder if this wind noise is going to be a problem here or not. Anyway, we're going to hope it's not a problem here on this gorgeous day in the collapse of Global Industrial Civilization. It is Monday morning, August 2nd, 2021. Seeming like a fine September day in uh, early August in the Finger Lakes. But I need to get busy finishing out the siding on this fine looking tiny house on this beautiful Monday morning. But before I start ripping up a former pine tree do what I do every day and that is chronicle the collapse of the planet and guys I uh, I have three options today we have three choices today we can from science alert nearly 14,000 Scientists warn that Earth's vital signs are rapidly worsening. Yes. Uh, experts have issued yet another warning about the state of our planet, and this latest update is truly devastating. So we have the truly devastating update on the state of the planet here on this gorgeous Monday morning. How about climate change fears spur more Americans to join survivalist schools. Yes, if something breaks down, if the grid drops out, all of this modern technology fails us instantaneously. That is from NBC News looking at the collapse of a planet. But what I'm going to do today, guys, and, and good Lord, I'm barely going to be able to break the surface of this. I uh, referenced this report in my sermon yesterday. Uh, in that sermon, they referenced this report uh, written by an all-star cast of doomers. This came out. I guess it went right below my radar from Frontiers in Conservation Science a couple of months ago. Good Lord. Uh, among others, the authors of this, Corey Bradshaw, Paul Ehrlich, Gerardo Ceballos, who I just interviewed, uh, Eileen Christ, uh, Peter Raven, William Ripple, M Mathis Wackernagel, and uh, a bunch of other folks teaming up. Maybe these are a few of those 14,000 scientists from this excellent uh, article, Frontiers in Conservation Science, talking about global biodiversity threats in this book-length essay called Understanding the Challenges of Avoiding a Ghastly Future. So what was that last one we just said? A truly, we're going to go from truly devastating state of the planet to our ghastly future. Yes. And uh, again, guys, I am going, all I'm going to have time to do here is read the abstract and introduction then I'm gonna read the first sentence of each chapter this is and I'm gonna put the link on here anybody trying to understand what is going on on this planet who did not get it yesterday let uh, let all of this group of uh, collapsologist explain it to you okay so what are we going to learn in this report? We report three major and confronting, major and confronting environmental issues that have received little attention and require urgent action. <clears throat> yes, 
First, we review the evidence that future environmental conditions will be far more dangerous than currently believed. Do you think so? This is talking about the future headlines worse than previously thought. Uh, the scale of the threats to the biosphere and all of its life forms, including humanity, is in fact so great that it is difficult to grasp for even well-informed experts. Guys, I am worried about the wind, so I'm not going to start this over, but I am going to move the... Uh, we're going to move the camera around here, and uh, I'm going to try to get the microphone out of the wind. So where does that put me? Good Lord. Such a professional operation here at uh, Collapse Chronicles. Little dog, I'm going to move you. You can, why don't you just go get some chippies or something? Now, of course, I won't be able to read in the in the bright sun. So, uh, we might have a little bit of planet nibbling going on in the background here while we're going through this. Uh, okay, so I don't even know if I am in the screen or not, but who cares? All right, <clears throat> where were we? The first threat, uh, we review the evidence that future environmental conditions will be far more dangerous than currently believed. The scale of the threat to the biosphere and all its life forms, including humanity, is in fact so great that it is difficult to grasp for even well-informed experts such as myself. <clears throat> Second, we ask what political or economic system or leadership is prepared to handle these predicted disasters or even capable of such action. This is for anyone thinking that killing capitalism is going to save the planet. Third, this dire situation places an extraordinary responsibility on scientists to speak out candidly and accurately when engaging with government, business, and the public. We especially draw attention to the lack of appreciation of the enormous challenges to creating a sustainable future. The added stresses to human health, wealth, and well-being will perversely diminish our political capacity to mitigate the erosion of ecosystem services on which our society depends. The science underlying these issues is strong, but awareness is weak without fully appreciating and broadcasting, which is what we do here at Collapse Chronicles, the scale of the problem and the enormity of the solutions required, society will fail to achieve even modest sustainability goals. That was the abstract. So we're going to read the introduction and then just the first sentence of the breakdown. Okay. Introduction to the collapse of a planet, which I cannot read in this on this gorgeous sunny day. <clears throat> okay, take it away, guys. I think you're. What are we looking at? Let me do this. Okay, that's probably too high. I have no idea if I am in the screen, but again, who cares? Introduction. Humanity, that would be us, humanity is causing a rapid loss of biodiversity and with it, Earth's ability to support complex life. But the mainstream is having difficulty 
grasping the magnitude of this loss despite the steady erosion of the fabric of human civilization. While suggested solutions abound, the current scale of their implementation does not match the relentless progression of biodiversity loss and other existential threats tied to the continuous expansion of the human enterprise, such as siding a tiny house in the Finger Lakes. Yes, that is the human enterprise at work. Time delays between ecological deterioration and socioeconomic penalties, as with climate disruption, for example, impede recognition of the magnitude of the challenge and timely counteraction needed. In addition, disciplinary specialization and insularity encourage unfamiliarity with the complex adaptive systems in which problems and their potential solutions are embedded. Widespread ignorance of human behavior and the incremental nature of socio-political processes that plan and implement solutions further delay effective action. We summarize the state of the natural world in stark form here to clarify the gravity of the human predicament. We also outline likely future trends in biodiversity decline, climate disruption, and human consumption and population growth to demonstrate the near certainty that these problems will worsen over the coming decades with negative impacts for centuries to come. Finally, we discuss the ineffectiveness of current and planned actions that are attempting to address the ominous erosion of Earth's life support system. Ours is not a call to surrender. We aim to provide leaders with a realistic cold shower of the state of the planet that is essential for planning to avoid a ghastly future. There you go. So, of course, we're going to start with, so then they break this all down into all these chapters. I'm just going to read the first sentence or two from each of the chapters of this study, and uh, I will put the link on here. You can read this thing. Then, of course, there are links to dozens of other studies and reports backing up everything uh, in this uh report of our ghastly future. On this gorgeous sunny day, I'm having a ghastly time being able to read this. Uh, anyway, maybe I can, uh, you know, I paid, I paid $1,600 for this damn computer and it's got one of these, um, it, it's, it's got one of these, uh, you know, one of these damn uh, glossy screens. Good Lord, uh, maybe this helps. Okay, we're gonna start with biodiversity loss. Major changes in the biosphere are directly linked to the growth of human systems. While the rapid loss of species and populations differs regionally in intensity, and most species have not even been adequately accessed for extinction risk, certain global trends are obvious. 
Since the start of agriculture around 11,000 years ago, the biomass of terrestrial vegetation has been halved with a corresponding loss of 20% of its original biodiversity. And this was a report from 2010, together denoting that more than 70% of the Earth's land surface has been altered by Homo sapiens. Now, the one I was reading yesterday, according to the way, who, who whichever study they referenced yesterday, they were saying more than 97% has been altered by humans. This is saying more than 70. I'm in the 97% crowd. Oh. Okay, uh, there have been more than 70% documented, uh, I'm sorry, more than 700 documented vertebrate and 600 plant uh, species extinction over the past 500 years with many more species clearly having gone extinct unrecorded population sizes of vertebrate species that have been monitored across years have declined by an average of 68 percent over the last five decades with clusters <coughs> uh, of populations in extreme decline thus presaging the imminent extinction of their species. Uh, anyway, guys, I think we've heard this before, but we're going to move on to the next chapter uh, titled, appropriately enough, The Sixth Mass Extinction. A mass extinction is defined as a loss of 75% of all species on the planet over a geologically short interval, generally anything shorter than three million years. At least five major extinctions have occurred since the Cambrian, blah, blah, blah. And we've heard all of this background rates and, and you know, uh, the IUCN estimates now that some 20% of all species are in danger of extinction over the next few decades, which greatly exceeds the normal background rate. Uh, that we are already on the path of a six major extinction, major extinction is now scientifically un deniable but uh, nobody nobody will probably deny it uh, all of this leading to ecological overshoot ecological overshoot otherwise known as population size and over consumption is what's causing ecological overshoot okay the global human population has approximately doubled since 1970, reaching nearly 7.8 billion people today. While some countries have stopped growing and even declined in size, world average fertility continues to be above replacement with an average of 4.8 children per woman in sub-Saharan Africa and families of greater than four ch children per woman in many other countries, including Afghanistan and Yemen. The 1.1 billion people today in sub-Saharan Africa, a region expected to experience particularly harsh reproduction from climate change is project projected 
to double over the next 30 years. By 2050, the world population will likely grow to 9.9 .9 billion people with growth projected by many to continue until well into the next century. Although more recent estimates predict a peak toward the end of this century. Yeah, I, uh, we, we, we will see if the human population makes it to the end of this century to... Uh... Did you know that large population size and continued growth are implicated in many societal problems? Yes, the impact of population growth combined with an imperfect distribution of resources leads to massive food security. And they go on and on with this. Uh, anyway, guys, I could do an entire rant on this chapter, ecological overshoot, population size, and overconsumption. This is kind of, uh, you know, Collapse 101. I wonder how many global leaders uh, are have read this. I, I was completely unaware. I, you know, some dude with a, uh, with a show called Collapse Chronicles, uh, completely unaware uh, of this article that came out months ago, yet uh, this is a bloop, a cold shower wake up call for all of the world leaders who are going to drop everything they are doing to read this report. I'm sure that this report is at the top of the list of concerns for world leaders. Which brings us to the next chapter, Failed International Goals and Prospects for the Future. Stopping biodiversity loss is nowhere close to the top of any country's priorities, trailing far behind other concerns such as employment, health care, economic growth, or currency stability. It is therefore no surprise that not one of the Aichi Biodiversity, the UN Biodiversity Targets for 2020 set at the Convention on Biological Diversity's 2020 conference was met. Do you think so? Even had the targets been met, <clears throat> they would have still fallen short of realizing any substantive reductions in extinction rates. More broadly, most of the nature-related United Nations Sustainable Development Goals are also on track for failure. Yes, I uh, do you think so. Therefore, the apparent paradox of high and rising average standard of living despite mounting environmental toll has come at a price, has come at a great cost to the stability of humanity's median and long-term life support system. In other words, humanity is running an ecological Ponzi scheme in which society robs nature and future generations to pay for boosting incomes in the short term. Even the World Economic Forum which is captive of dangerous greenwashing propaganda now recognizes biodiversity loss as one of the top threats to the global economy. I'm sure they do, those greenwashers there. Do not forget uh, the next chapter, climate disruption. 
it's hard to remember climate disruption when you're sitting out on a spectacularly gorgeous 72 degree August day with a summer breeze blowing across your microphone detailing the collapse of a planet due to climate change. Okay, I know nobody here listening is aware of this. The dangerous effects of climate change are much more evident to people more evident to people than those of biodiversity loss, but society is still finding that difficult to deal with them effectively. Civilization has already exceeded a global warming of one degree C above pre-industrial conditions and is on track. Guys, we, we have all uh, heard this. Uh, greenhouse gas concentrations will continue to increase via positive feedback such as melting firm permafrost and the release of stored methane resulting in further delay of temperature reducing responses even if humanity stops using fossil fuels entirely well before 2030 and once again thank you guys uh, all of this crap uh, that we are going to save the planet by stopping fossil fuel emissions it, it is one of the single biggest lies to keep business as usual going there is it, it, it at this point guys uh, each year humanity's uh, contribution to greenhouse gases is is, is getting uh, is getting less and less and and all of this crap uh, that we stop pre emitting uh, fossil fuel greenhouse gas emissions is going to do a damn thing the genie is out of the bottle the permafrost is melting uh, the, the whole thing is going down cut this crap uh, 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 about ending fossil fuel emissions saving the planet. Don't get me wrong, I mean, I'm all for ending fossil fuel emissions, but anybody thinking uh, that's going to save this planet obviously needs to read this scientific report. But we're going to continue on. Good God, uh, I think I'm halfway through this maybe. Political impotence. Yes, political impotence. Okay. <clears throat> if most of the world's population truly understood and appreciated the magnitude of the crises we summarize here and the inevitability of worsening conditions, one could logically expect positive changes in politics and policies to match the gravity of these existential threats. But the opposite is unfolding. Wow. The, right, the rise of right-wing populist leaders is associated with anti-environment agendas as seen recently, for example, in Brazil, not to mention here in the U.S. Um, large differences in income, wealth, and consumption among people and even among countries render it difficult to make any policy global in its execution or effort. And it goes on and on and on with this. And then uh, changing the rules of the game. Uh, there is no shortage of evidence-based <laughs> literature proposing ways to change human behavior for the benefit of all extant life. The remaining questions are less about what to do and more about how 
Yeah, and good luck. But anyway, we're going to jump down to the conclusions because uh, the sun is getting ready to hit the point where I cannot read one more word. So hopefully I can make it through the conclusions of our ghastly future. <clears throat> okay. And, and guys, understand I have read about 10% of this. See, if you, anyone want, wanting uh, 10 times more of this can go on this link. All right, conclusions. <clears throat> We have summarized predictions of a ghastly future of mass extinction, declining health, and climate disruption upheavals, including looming massive migrations and resource conflicts this century, if not this decade. Yet, our goal is not is not to present a fatalist perspective because there are many examples of successful interventions to prevent extinctions, restore ecosystems, and encourage more sustainable economic activity at the, lo at the local and regional scales. Instead, we contend that only a realistic appreciation of the colossal challenges facing the international community might allow it to chart a less ravaged future. While there have been more recent calls for the scientific community in particular to be more vocal about their warnings to humanity, these have been in these have been insufficiently foreboding, insufficiently foreboding to match the scale of the crisis. Given the existence of a human optimism bias, that triggers some to underestimate the severity of a crisis and ignore expert warnings, a good communication strategy must ideally undercut this optimism bias without inducing disproportionate feelings of fear and despair. Yes. It is therefore incumbent on experts in any discipline that deals with the future of the biosphere and human well-being to eschew reticence, avoid sugarcoating the overwhelming challenges ahead, and tell it like it is. Anything else is misleading at best or negligent and potentially lethal for the human enterprise at worst. There you go. Well, that was a mouthful and uh, I understand I have been talking to myself for the last 10 or 12 minutes. Maybe, uh, maybe I had one person and a dog hear about half of that, but with that done, it is time for my buddy and I to crank up the human enterprise here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Uh, so we're going to get the saws and the drills and the hammers going. And I suggest you get out there and uh, enjoy your human enterprise while you still can before our ghastly future gets here quicker than previously thought. Yes, what do you think about your ghastly future? So, bye guys. <laughs>